Everyone loves incredibly rare and unique cars, and there's so many of them out there, we bet you've not seen them all. So we've rounded up some of the coolest and most unique vehicles you've probably never seen before. Icona Volcano Titanium The titanium in its name is not arbitrary. This one-off supercar is the first in the world with a unique titanium and carbon fiber body. Created by Italian design house Icona and built by famed Italian coach builder Secomp, this beautiful package barely contains a beast of engineering. Inside the sleek shell lives a 6.2-liter aluminum supercharged 8-cylinder engine that roars out an impressive 680 horsepower that can take you from 0 to 60 in an eye-watering 2.8 seconds. That time is even more impressive when you consider that the car weighs in with a curb weight of 3,515 pounds, heavier than some in the same supercar class. If that's not enough performance for you, the builders claim that it could produce over 1,000 horsepower should the owner demand it. Even though its performance doesn't measure up to some on the list, what the car lacks in racetrack protection, it more than makes up for in style and comfort. With over 1,000 hours put into hand hammering the SR71 Blackbird inspired body panels and attention to detail in the cabin, it's clear that this machine was designed as much for the open road as for the Pebble Beach putting green. Even with the reported price tag of $3.8 billion, I'm sure there is someone with a burning desire to own the world's first titanium supercar and enough money burning a hole in their pocket that this beautiful one-of-a-kind car will never be without a loving home. Ferrari F40 LM The LM is the racing version of the vaunted F40 which is the last model to have Enzo Ferrari's blessing. As the legendary car builder passed away shortly after its debut in 1987, Although the standard F40 was very impressive on its own, customers desired that some be built as turnkey race cars straight from the factory. It didn't take Ferrari long to decide this was a great idea. Ferrari turned to longtime business partner and race car builder Michelotto Automobili to bring the LM or Le Mans version to life. And boy did they bring it to life! The LM used the same 2.9-liter twin-turbo V8 engine as the production F40, but was tuned so much that it earned a new name, the Tipo F120B. Upgrades include a new set of IHI turbos, increasing boost from around 16 psi to 37.7 psi. This translates to an increase of overall horsepower from a respectable 471 to 720 horsepower which is reduced 0 to 60 three times from the stock 3.8 seconds, down to a mere 3.1 seconds, and a top speed of 229 miles per hour. Additional adjustments were made to make the car even more aerodynamic, stiffen the chassis, widen the tires, and of course larger brakes to help slow the car over the track's punishing curves. Every refit was done for the sole purpose of improving racing performance. Although built for the track, many of the cars went directly into private ownership right out of the factory. Only 19 Ferrari LMs were ever built, but several have rolled over to the auction block, bringing some very impressive profits for the sellers. That means owning one of these iconic autos is still a possibility, but fair warning. The most recent sale ended with a price tag north of $6.2 million. 1970 Porsche 917K the 917 is arguably the most iconic Porsche ever built, and from 1969 to 1970, 25 Porsche 917s were purpose-built for Le Mans. On May 14, 1970, it even gave Porsche its first overall victory in the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is legendary all on its own. The exhaust note alone emitted from the Hans Mesger-designed air-cooled 4.5-liter flat 12 engine could turn the toughest gearhead's legs to jelly. Even with all that, one stood out from seemingly humble beginnings. Well, as humble as Porsche race cars can be. It began its life as a test car at Le Mans. It drove the course, just not during competition. Normally, that might be where the story ends. Except that this Gulf Oil liveried 917K was sold to a production company to be prominently featured in the 1970 film Le Mans. Driven by Hollywood's king of leather-gloved swagger on wheels, Steve McQueen. After filming, the car was sold and destined to sit over two decades in a barn, finally seeing light again in 2001. It was then meticulously restored with all of the original pieces, and more than a little love, by Swiss specialist Graber Sport Garage. 
Now back to its full glory, it was poised to top itself once again, selling at auction for a head-spinning $14 million, making it the most expensive Porsche ever. 1964 Ford GT40 Everyone knows how cool the GT40 is and the supercar it spawned, the Ford GT, but its origins are cooler still. Early in 1963, after a buyout deal between Ford and Ferrari went sour, business became personal, with insults hurled between the founder of Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari, and the head of Ford Motor Company, Henry Ford II. The feud was about racing and Henry Ford II, or Hank the Deuce, as he was sometimes called, decided that he would do everything in his power to embarrass Ferrari in the race that they had been dominating, winning six of the previous seven races with one loss to American race car designer and driver Carroll Shelby. The beef was so notorious that 20th Century Fox made a movie about it in 2019, starring Matt Damon and Christian Bale. The early GT40 prototype, the GT101, was born. It was based on the British Lola MK6 and powered by a 4.7-liter V8. But the first two years were a disappointment due to poor performance and reliability. Ford then tapped the one man proven able to beat Ferrari. That's right, Carroll Shelby. The Shelby American Partnership produced this car, the GT104, for the 1965 season. During the race, the fiberglass bodied racer caught fire and was forced to retire. This is still an incredible car, even without taking the coveted win at Le Mans. The lessons learned with this car prompted improvements including an engine swap to the much larger 7.0-liter V8 that culminated in the GT40 Mark II, which not only rewarded Hank the Deuce with a win at Le Mans in 1966, but continued to win for the next four years. This early prototype was later restored by GT40 specialist Paul Azante. It was then sold at auction, bringing in $7 million. Not bad for a loser. Bugatti Type 41 Royale Kellner Coupe Bugatti was not always known for their supercars. Nearly 100 years ago, they were known for building some of the most opulent automobiles the world has ever seen, with the Type 41 Royale being one of the largest and most luxurious. This French behemoth was 21 feet long, weighing in at 7,000 pounds, and powered by one of the largest engines ever made, a 12.7-liter cast-iron straight-8 based on a design intended for the French Air Ministry. In fact, Bugatti built a series of high-speed rail cars powered by these engines after the last Royale was completed. The interior was just as cushy as you'd expect, bespoke with a fine walnut steering wheel and knobs crafted from whalebone. 25 Royales were planned and intended for royalty, with each custom-built sedan offered with a staggering base price of $30,000. Unfortunately for their plans, 1927 through 1933 were not great years. Economically, that even saw kings tightening their belts due to the Great Depression. In the end, only seven were built and six survived today. Only three were sold and one was wrecked in 1931. The Keller Coupe was the fifth car built. It was one of three kept for the personal use of the Bucati themselves. These cars were so special that the three were bricked up behind a wall to protect them from the marauding Nazis during World War II. After the war, the Bugatti family fell on hard times and in 1950 sold two of the cars for about $571 and two refrigerators, or roughly $600 each. A restoration costing 1 million francs, or about $2,858, brought it back to life and brought it to America changing hands several times. The current owner and purchase price are a mystery, but the last known selling price was a mind-blowing $15.7 million in 1990. Porsche 550 Spider. Only 90 of these sleek, topless little sports cars were made between 1953 and 56, and fewer than 46 remain today. Popular for the track, these little racers sported an all-aluminum mid-mounted 1.5-liter four-cylinder boxer engine pushing a scant 110 horsepower through a four-speed gearbox. That may not sound like much, but it was plenty to take the win at many prestigious events, including the 24 Hours of Le Mans and Carrera Panamericana. The most famous 550 was owned by brooding heartthrob James Dean. Besides acting, Dean was an avid racer. The hobby was so dangerous that studio execs had him sign a contract forbidding him to race during a film project. Just as he was finishing up filming Giant, Dean traded in his Porsche 356 Super Speedstar for the sleek 550 Spider. 
Dean entered it into the Salinas Road event scheduled for October 1st and 2nd. He sent it in to have the race number 130 applied and the words Little Bastard across the rear cowling. The car came with red leather bucket seats and red tail stripes from the factory. In his book Blessings in Disguise, British actor Alec Guinness says that Dean introduced himself to Guinness outside the Villa Capri restaurant in Hollywood and asked him to take a look at the spider. Guinness said that he thought the car appeared sinister and told Dean, if you get in that car, you will be found dead in it by this time next week. This encounter took place on September 23, 1955, seven days before Dean's death on September 30, and only one day before the race at Salinas. This occurrence took the spot in most people's memory and overshadowed much of the car's rich racing history. Even still, it's a hot collectible, with one example sold by famed Porsche fanatic comedian Jerry Seinfeld for a reported $5.3 million, and another selling for a cool $6 million, proving the sun can still shine when you have no roof. 1928 Mercedes-Benz S-Type 26-120-180 Sports Tourer while we're on the subject of convertibles, Mercedes-Benz made some beauties. Having firmly established themselves as a purveyor of some of the finest automobiles available, they attracted the attention of the wealthiest people in the country, including Cliff Durant, race car driver and son of a rival car manufacturer William Durant, founder of General Motors. By the 1920s, the company started producing the K&S models. You'd be hard-pressed to find a more expensive car on the market at the time, and for good reason. These cars were amazing machines! Chief designer of the car was Ferdinand Porsche. Yes, that Porsche. There were 150 of these sporty four-seaters made originally, but only a few examples survive today. The Type S caught the eye of Al Jolson. Jolson is arguably America's first vaudevillian pop idol. With sold-out shows and over 80 hit records, he was also the star of the first commercially successful talking picture, The Jazz Singer. Calling L. Jolson an automotive enthusiast is an understatement. Jolson owned a lot of cars, nice ones. He loved the sleek engineering and had the money for the best there was. The one he loved the best? You guessed it, the 1928 Mercedes-Benz Type S. He and his wife even posed for a picture with it for the press. The car was up for auction at Pebble Beach by Gooding & Company with an asking price estimated at five to six million dollars. California, here I come. Ferrari F12 Berlinetta TRS Ferrari's special projects program, overseen by design chief Flavio Manzoni, created this beauty for the same anonymous customer, proving that if your wallet is fat enough, Ferrari is more than happy to craft a car that suits your exacting taste. The mysterious customer clearly knew what they wanted, choosing the already formidable F12 Berlinetta as the starting point. The awesome 6.3-liter V12 of the base car remains untouched, but that doesn't mean it's not fearsome, delivering 750 horsepower and 509 pounds of torque at 9,000 RPM, which translates to a 0-62 to 62 time of 3.1 seconds and pulling up to a 124 miles per hour in a mere 8.1 seconds. The styling, taking cues from the 57 250 Testarossa, included a dramatic wrap around the windscreen two Speedster-style humped fairings behind the seats, a redesigned front bumper, a stylized rear end with recessed lights and integrated spoiler, and a new engine cover with a glass panel to unmask those gorgeous V12 cylinder heads. Oh, and of course, it's red. Now, don't think this is some posh Sunday driver in a throwback to the bare-bones racers of the past. Many of the creature comforts have been stripped out, Window controls, central air vents, float mats, stereo system, and even the glove compartment and cup holders were put on hold. Of course, the air conditioner was spared, we're not animals. First unveiled at 2014's Ferrari Cavalcade in Rome, it's made a tour of Europe, showing up at events in England, Spain, and Corsica, among others. What does such a beauty queen cost, you ask? They're not saying. But with an off-the-rack price of $295,000 for the base car alone, we're betting a lot. Lamborghini Veneno How do you make an already awesome Lamborghini more awesome? It seems impossible, yet they do it time and time again. So when they wanted something truly special for their 50th anniversary, they developed the Veneno. 
named after the famed Fighting Bowl, because of course it is. It debuted at the Geneva Motor Show with an asking price of $4.5 million, making it the second most expensive production car in the world. It's based on the Aventador, but it bears little similarity besides the interior, the carbon fiber monocoque chassis, front and rear subframe, and pushrod suspension. The new exterior sports razor-sharp lines with a face reminiscent of a metallic praying mantis ready to strike. Aggressive and beautiful, it seems to be daring you to try and keep up. But it's not just about looks. The Shining Carapace barely contains a 6.5-liter V12 that churns out 750 horsepower through a 7-speed automated manual transmission, launching from 0 to 60 in only 2.8 seconds. This is essentially a racing prototype for the open road with the forward air channels, redesigned air arches, and a large three-way adjustable carbon fiber wing to reduce airflow and improve downforce. Every styling feature is specifically designed to keep the craft earthbound and stable, especially while cornering, which is important since the car can pull 1.41 Gs in a hard turn. When you've burned up your Pirelli P0 tires, which I imagine is about every time you turn the key, it's equipped with pit crew approved center lock wheels for a quick swap so you can get back to eating up the pavement where it belongs. Aston Martin DBR1 Bloomberg had dubbed this car the most important Aston Martin ever built. Just look at that sleek, snake-like styling of the DBR1 and you would assume that it must be a winner. Built in 1956 to compete in the World Sports Car Championship, the DBR1 was not only competitive, it dominated the race throughout the 1950s, earning six World Sports Car Championship wins. It also gave Aston Martin their only win at the 24 Hours of Le Mans and is one of only three cars to take the top rank at both prestigious races in the same year and matching the Ferrari 250TR's three consecutive wins at Nürburgring, Le Mans, and Tourist Trophy from the previous year. Since it was made to race, it had to play by the rules, but the race commission had ruled that cars no longer had to be based on street-legal road cars. This untied the hands of designers in some interesting ways, allowing them to build a racer from the ground up. Powering it was a 2.5-liter straight-six engine rated at 250 horsepower. This doesn't seem like an overabundance of muscle until you see that this petite powerhouse tips the scales at a mere 1,765 pounds. The entire car is a model of aerodynamic efficiency from its swooping hood, headrest fairing hump, closed front wheel well, and a large triangular vent on the side, later to become a signature design trait for all future Aston Martins. Only five were constructed and one sold for $25.5 million, making it more than just an important car, but also the most expensive British-made car ever built. Oldsmobile F88 If this is what they mean by your father's Oldsmobile, then your father was a very lucky man. An early ad called the F88 an experimental high-performance two-passenger sports convertible, and it was all of those things. Initially sketched out by designer Bill Lang and built in 1954 using the Corvette chassis and a smooth fiberglass body, this shiny golden dream car used the 5.8-liter Super 88 V8 engine fed by a four-barrel carburetor producing a respectable 250 horsepower. The F88 has styling cues that bridge the past to the future of automobile design. You can see the effect this design had on the new era of smaller, sporty cars of the 1950s. It made a splash with its bright chrome of the windshield frame, huge bumper encompassing the grille, a row of dragon's teeth bumperettes across the back, slanted grills on the front fenders, and more. Other notable features include a bumper that folds down to reveal the spare tire, the rocket-like taillight fins, and a center console that bisects the passenger compartment and crowned by a tower of gauges. This instrument panel was later used on the Cutlass. The F88 was sold for $3.2 million in 2005. It's now on display at the Gateway Colorado Automobile Museum. There were rumors that a second example was built and met a fiery end between shows but we like to think that was just someone's bad dream. Ferrari 250 Testarossa For some, the mention of Testarossa conjures images of white linen suits, pastel shirts, and a pair of Ray-Bans. 
But long before Croquet and Tubbs prowled the streets of Miami, the 1957 Ferrari 250 Tessarossa was making dreams come true as it regularly topped the leaderboards of Europe's most famous road races. Notably, it was a 10-time winner of the World Sports Car Championship and 3-time winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The name Tessarossa means redhead and refers to the brilliant red paint on the engine's cylinder heads. Of course, the rest of the car was painted to match. Two factory models and 19 customer models of the 250TR were produced. Due to rule changes for the major events, engine size was limited to only 3 liters. So, that's what it got in the form of a V12, fed by 6 two-barrel carbs, resulting in 300 horsepower. That's 100 horses per liter, which was kind of a big deal. The body design is very distinctive. The front end featured a cutaway nose reminiscent of a Formula One car. Headlights were set into the pontoon-like fenders that enveloped the front wheel. The large channels in the hood funneled air to the brakes, providing much-needed cooling to prevent potentially deadly brake fade. It was found that this design hurt the aerodynamics and caused significant instability at higher speeds. Even still, the car just kept winning races. One sold in 2014 for $39 million, making it the second most valuable Ferrari in existence. Maybach Accelero Imagine a tire company asking a famously German luxury car maker to build a 200 plus mile per hour car around their new tire. Sounds like a joke, but that's exactly what happened. Fulda of the Goodyear Group commissioned Daimler Chrysler, the new parent and owner of the Maybach Marquis, to build the Accelero to test a set of their new 23-inch Fulda Carat Accelero tires. They wanted the prototype to be capable of reaching speeds in excess of 217 miles per hour. They pulled in their best, and even some promising students from the Transportation Design School of Pforzheim University of Applied Sciences. They based the Accelero on the Maybach 57 and powered it with a 5.9-liter twin-turbo V12 with a peak output of 690 horsepower and, incredibly, 752 pounds-feet of torque. That torque number is significant because it takes a lot more than horsepower to move 5,864 pounds of car down the road. For you math whizzes out there, that's only 136 pounds shy of 3 tons. This nearly 3-ton car could rocket from a standstill to 62 miles per hour in just 4.4 seconds. And it did indeed reach the requisite 217 miles per hour, fulfilling the hopes of all parties involved. This beautiful $8 million brute diverges from other Maybox by combining the performance of a top-end sports car with the comfort of a bespoke limousine. The sleek two-door coupe found wider fame by appearing in the German action series Alarm für Cobra 11 and even the Jay-Z Lost One music video. While you're gaping at the butter-smooth lines and fine interior appointments, be sure to note the tires that sparked the endeavor. The heritage of style and sophistication found in this example makes it clear why 100 years ago, none but the finest garages housed a Maybach. That's all we have for now, but we want to know what you thought about these cool cars and which one was your favorite. We know there are a lot of cool and unique cars out there, and we got a second part coming, so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss it. Thanks for watching.